William Grant Still. William Grant Still Jr. was born on May 11, 1895 in Woodville, Mississippi. His parents were Carrie Fambro and William Grant Still Sr., who were both teachers. William Still Sr., who played in a band, passed away while his son was an infant. His mother remarried and moved to Little Rock, Arkansas, where Still spent most of his childhood. In spite of any and every challenge left through at Still, he was able to find reprieve in music. Lucky for him, William Grant Still's stepfather, Charles Shepperson, and his grandmother, Anne Fambro, recognized his growing interest in music and sought to bring out the best in him. Shepperson took Still to performances and exposed him to classical music, and Still's grandmother sang for him African American spirituals, the freedom songs of enslaved black people. Still became a child prodigy, teaching himself to play the clarinet, oboe, saxophone, viola, double bass, and cello, and graduating high school at the age of 16. Still first attended Wilberforce University and HBCU, but transferred to the Oberlin Conservatory of Music to focus on his musical career. It was around this time that the powerful arts movement, brought about by marginalized African Americans seeking to establish for themselves a national identity and a systemic status equal to white Americans, was brewing. This was none other than the Harlem Renaissance, which William Grant still promptly joined. Still composed his first symphony in 1930, titled Afro-American Symphony, which manifested in four movements, the poetry of Paul Lawrence Dunbar, the blues scale, and the melodic and harmonic contours of the African-American spirituals. Enjoyed internationally, Afro-American Symphony became the world's most popular symphony composed by an American and remained that way until 1950. Still will go on to produce over 200 brilliant, inspiring, and boundary-pushing works, such as the opera Troubled Island, about Haiti's first emperor, the string quartet, Dances to Panama, the three-part song, Three Visions, along with many assemblies of the African-American spirituals. Still was the first African-American to have a symphony performed by a major orchestra, an opera performed by a major opera company, and the first African-American to have an opera aired on national television. William Grant Still passed away on December 3, 1978, at the age of 83. Still, as a world-renowned creator who defied a system rigged against him, remains a source of inspiration for aspiring black composers and for us all as we continue to fight for equality today. As William Grant Still once said, I don't think that it is good for the world of music to have everything come out of the same mold. God didn't place only roses on earth, or only lilies, or only violets. He put flowers of many sorts and many colors here, the beauty of each enhancing that of the others.